Jersey. My office was in Metuchen for, for a decade. I'm a local guy, uh, you know, having went to St. Francis Grammar School, who was married in Metuchen, so I've been around for a lot of years. So I'm here to try to educate people for a little while on wills, estates, probate powers of attorney, things like that. Uh, but also the idea is to try to, uh, you know, explain to people what happens when you don't have any kind of plan. I can't hear anything. So, so if you don't I have don't planning, then, uh, then it becomes a, a problem. Now, oftentimes people would ask me, I'd see people like, uh, you know, uh, at social events, chamber of commerce, or, you know, and they would say, Kenny, why do I really need to have a will? Doesn't everything go to my, my spouse if I pass away? Uh, um, I goes, well, yeah, the answer is, Yes, but that's not doing planning. If you don't have like a proper planning, you're make you're really going to make it cost more money for your family and making it making everything more stressful. And the whole idea of doing planning is to try to make things as easy as possible for uh, for every for everyone. You know, so for example, if you if you if you pass away, you leave no will, or your will is not. Um, not valid because it wasn't signed correctly. Number one, the procedure to distribute assets becomes much more complicated. It will require, let's say there's kids, it will require all the children to select someone to be the administrator, then all the children have to sign a renunciation affidavit in front of a notary. Uh, and then you have to pay fees to have that uh, renunciation signed. And if all the children don't sign a renunciation affidavit, then a complaint order show cause has to be filed in the superior court, costing over three grand, spending a, spending time in court for having the judge like then pick someone who would who would be uh, the administrator. Well, certainly like uh, you know you know spending four hundred dollars or so and having a will uh, is is less expensive. Number two, if there's no will, there's additional expenses that have to be incurred because there's higher administration fees. Uh, and then there's also a thing that has to be taken out called a surety bond um, you know, with, uh, with a bonding company and the fee has to be paid every year uh, as long as the estate's open. Uh, number three, uh, state law determines who gets assets, and and uh, sometimes it's people that don't care about you. And we're going to go into later on, while you know there's no rule that requires that everyone be treated equally, or you get to really you get to decide who you want. Uh, people that have minor children, well, uh, if there's no will and there's a sudden uh, you know like uh, you know some people are 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 um, you know suddenly die, a stranger determines who gets custody of of children. And that stranger is a, um, a superior court judge. Again, going in front of judges costs a lot of money. Um, you lose the opportunity to possibly reduce taxes. Um, uh, if there's no spouse, no close blood relatives, the state gets someone's money. Uh, and, but most importantly, when people don't have wills or any kind of planning, it usually causes aggravation, fights, sometimes lawsuits amongst the family. So when people are grieving, and uh, dealing with death, they shouldn't be overwhelmed with financial concerns and estate problems. Uh, as when there's not, not a will or the will wasn't properly signed because someone tried to do some cheap things online. So think about who do, would you like to get your assets? Who don't you want to get your assets? Um, when there's minor children, minor grandchildren, who'd be the best choice to, to hold their money? Who would not be the best choice? Uh, so also, uh, um, I, I'll keep on saying, beware of these online documents that are do-it-yourself things, because we find people don't do it right, or they're done hastily, and uh, you know judges often throw them out. So I wouldn't recommend uh, an online form, just like I wouldn't recommend anyone trying to do their own electrical work. You know, people that try to watch a YouTube video and do their own plumbing work uh, typically will, like, uh, you know, uh, do it do it wrong. So have a professional do it right and make sure that you have a self-proving will. Now, su surprisingly, um, you know, um, one of the things that we changed last year was to try to make things easy for everyone. And uh, back last um, you know, January, we switched from having people handwrite what they want in a will questionnaire to uh, people typing up everything on a, uh, uh, a very short, you know, two page will questionnaire. So when COVID hit last, uh, last March, we were still able to do people's documents 
uh, without people having to come into our office. And everyone found that was an easier way to do stuff. Otherwise, you know, people without work had to take a day off of work, maybe bring their spouse in. They would sit down in the office and we go over things and, um, you know, and then they had to make an appointment to, to come back and sign. Well, we tried to take make it easier for people. And that's what most attorneys have done where we email in a short questionnaire. The questionnaire says, okay, who's executor one? Who's executor two? People type up things because you know, who, who really doesn't have a computer or, or an iPhone uh, nowadays? If you don't have a computer and iPhone, then you probably don't have that many assets. And um, you know, someone said, well, do these older people have uh, com computers? And, I, and I, I was surprised when I went talk to senior groups, yeah, a lot <laughs> many, many of them do have the computers and laptops because they found that they could communicate with their grandkids and share photos, et cetera. Um, so, okay, so logistically, um, people type in for the, for the attorney, they type in their name. So the, that's, that's great because now we don't have to re worry about uh, people's handwriting or misspelling names. Um, and then they type in, who's going to be executor one, who's going to be executor two. Uh, and uh, you never want to have joint executors. There's a reason why there's only one president of the United States and then a vice president. Um, um, you know, so you have an executor one, and executor two. Even if they're twins that live together, uh, having joint executors creates twice as much work. And, you know, part of doing this planning is to try to make it as easy as possible. And uh, that's where people... Uh, cooperate. Sometimes you get, uh, you know, kids that, uh, you know, don't cooperate. Let's see. So, um, you know, there's one steering wheel, there's one captain of ship, you have an executive one, an executor two. And um, when people says, oh, I would like to have, you know, both, they goes, listen, take, take my advice. This is what I do for a living. You know, I know you love both your kids. You don't want to pick one over the other, but the whole idea is making it easier because if there's joint executors, that means, Two people got to sign uh, the, um, every check. Two, first of all, two people have to qualify before the, uh, the county surrogate. Two people then got to open up a bank account. Two people got to sign the cards at the bank. Two people got to sign every check. Two people have to sign the listing with the realtor. Two people got to sign the contract for sale. Two people got to sign addendums. Two people got to go to the closing. Two people have to go do everything. So. So again, it's best to have an executive one and executive two. Um, we used to ask many questions of what, what assets people have. Well, Rocky, believe it or not, New Jersey has reduced uh, the tax Rocky, to are, you or do you okay? want to wait? And sure. what we want to do is sure. have, yeah. have uh, no, uh, you know, we want to try to go over what's the New Jersey estate tax now? Well, they did away with it two years ago. It used to be $675,000. Everything was taxed over that at a high rate. Now New Jersey did away with the uh, New Jersey estate tax. Uh, now there is a federal estate tax, but that's for, that's for states over $11,700,000. And Ms. Chung and I know, and uh, I'm touching, there's so many, so many people that we know that have 11 and a half, $11.7 million everywhere. Uh, but um, most, so most people don't need this kind of sophisticated uh, estate planning, you know? So, but we do ask, okay, do you have real estate? What's the ballpark amount of what the assets that you have? Let's see, uh, do you have real estate in any other state? Because like if there's real estate in another state, that has to be, um, there's, a, there's a procedure called ancillary uh, probate. Um, now, in addition, uh, you know, you have certain assets that um, don't pass under the will. Uh, they pass by, by title. And an, an example of that is when a house is owned husband and wife. Well, if the house is owned husband and wife, it's what's called the tenants by the entirety. And it goes, um, you know, to, to, and it's owned by both of them, but it's not owned 50-50. It automatically goes to the, to the survivor, all right? Uh, bank accounts that are payable upon death, POD joint tenancy, a CD payable, that automatically goes to the survivor. A will cannot change that. He's Certain going way too fast. Yeah, by contract. Way. He's going uh, way too fast. Yeah, are, that's fine. Just listen. Are, Don't take notes. Just listen. Those are assets um, 
let's see, uh, and uh, so what are assets that pass by contract? Uh, IRA, 401k, life insurance, annuity, anything that has a beneficiary. So um, yeah, I tell people that it's a good idea to get a, a printout of who's getting things and what, uh, uh, because never assume that your beneficiary is who you, th who you think it is. Assume is always the wrong answer. Um, you know, so uh, we tell people double check, make sure that uh, what you have. Okay, so then, then you're gonna provide the attorney, right? Basically who's getting your things. And uh, many times people, you know, have been asked me like, uh, well, well, when can I sit down with you? And I said, well, are you married? Yes. Uh, do you have children? Yes. Are your children more or less than 21? Uh, they're older than 21. Is there any reason why you would want to disown any of your kids or not have them treated equally? No. Well, then you don't really need to meet with me because I know what you need. You know, uh, you, you know, you know. We I talk to people all the time uh, over the phone or through like uh, through chats. But uh, you know, it's kind of like you know when I when I need a knee surgery because I do a lot of these running races. You know, I didn't ask the doctor a lot about the knee surgery because I don't want to do research into the knee surgery. As a doctor, have you done this procedure many times before? He goes, Kenny, I could almost do this in my in my sleep. So, uh, but you know, sometimes uh, we don't make the, we. Uh, some people I tell, um, you know, we don't make everyone equal. Uh, an example is a client uh, last year said. Do I have to treat all my children equally? He goes, no, it's your, it's your call. What do you have in mind? She goes, well, one of my kids, we don't hear from that that much. I'd say he goes, like, uh, uh, he lives on the West Coast. We don't hear from him that much. He goes, well, let me ask, let me ask you a question. Did he get a card or a call on your birthday? Lady goes, no. Did he get a card or a call on Mother's Day? No. Did you get a card or call on your birthday? No. I goes, well, then why should you leave anything to the person? They don't care if, if you're alive. They have no interest in how you are. And believe me, if, uh, if you were to become sick and pass away, that would be probably the first person banging on the door saying, where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Sometimes we did a seminar for the ABA American Bar last week, where it was called estate planning for the dysfunctional child. So, you know, dysfunctional is, uh, you know, sometimes kids have special needs. Sometimes kids are alcoholic, drug addicts. Sometimes they have, they have mental problems, emotional problems, money problems. And we don't, don't want to give money outright. You don't want to give someone, you know, who can't handle money $300,000 outright. You know, money's you work for your whole life to say, here you go. Here you go. Here's, here's the, uh, here's the, uh, here's, here's the money. Um, so, uh, um, you know, so we're very careful in who's getting, uh, who's getting different, uh, you know, different assets, you know, in, in the will. And, uh, but again, remember a will can't change who you have is on your beneficiary for, for life insurance, you know, so you want to also, um, have set forth in the will, uh, if one of those beneficiaries passes away, who gets their share. You never want to have anything dangling. You don't want, it, it should always be spelled out, what if. So, you know, goes to spouse and to children. If there's uh, if the spouse predeceases, again, if, if that child doesn't have children, it goes to their surviving children, grandchildren. If they don't have any children, they go, it then would go to, uh, you know, the surviving kids. And otherwise, you know, again, you get to decide uh, who gets stuff. Some people would say, listen, I'm not going to leave you know, anything, okay, that's your call. Now, um, people all nowadays also want to have specific bequests. You know, uh, you know, they could have like, you know, their grand, their grandmother's like, you know, $10,000 ring, they want to leave it to a specific uh, child. So it's important that be put in the four corners of the will. We're not talking about, you know, the, the, uh, the junk in the house that has to be listed, but stuff that is of value. Uh, so, so think, you know, and, uh, listen, next month is mother's day. Um, if mom in front of everyone, it was videotaped said, listen, I want my jewelry to go to my grand, my granddaughter, um, Shannon. Well, not only does the executor not have to follow that the executor isn't allowed to follow it because the executor can only do what's in the four corners of the will. So if the will does not say granddaughter gets the rings, 
um, then they don't get it. It's not the executor's call to do what gra mom and grandma might have said there. And again, it should be in writing because even if mom said that in front of everyone, uh, if that's not there, then you know people cause problems down the road. Some people leave specific amounts of money to uh, to to a, to a charity. We've done wills where someone says, "Okay, I'm going to leave you know ten thousand dollars to uh, you know uh, you know St. Francis Cathedral. I'm going to leave money to St. Francis School. I'm leaving money to the uh, Rutgers Alumni Association or the uh, the uh, you know the it was the Douglas Alumni Association. So again, it's people's decision what what they want to do. Um, sometimes the fellows have like, you know, things that they had, they think sometimes people think their collectibles are really valuable, like the uh, baseball cards or, you know, okay. It makes people feel good. I goes, okay, listen, if you type it up, I'll, I'll, I'll add it. In. Um, but again, if it's worth something, if it's worth a couple grand, don't just rely upon writing it on a piece of paper and stapling it to the back of the, the will. Now we've talked about what's called specific bequests. Um, there's also something that I like to call the reverse specific bequest. And that is, I do not leave anything to this person or that person. We don't leave them a dollar. We don't leave a reason. Just, I don't leave anything to that person and, and their, and their family. Um, you know, so, uh, again, it's, it's your call. A will can be changed or modified as long as someone is competent. You know, so, uh, you know, I've done wills for people, then they've come back to me a couple of years later and say, you know what, let's say I like to change uh, who the executor is, that person's no longer in my life or, um, you know, hasn't been, I like to, I like to take someone out of the will because, you know, I send, I send this grandkid money every single year uh, at Christmas and I haven't, you know, I've sent them $15,000 and I've never even gotten a uh, thank you grandma uh, because, you know, it's not because they, you know, weren't raised, right? It's just, you know, they, they didn't do it. So people say, I'm, ta I'm taking them out. Um, you know, but again, it, it should be in the four corners of the will. Now, talking about executors, I'd say uh, um, the executor is a person that basically like, uh, um, takes care of the estate. Now, New Jersey is the probate easiest state. And at the end of the program, I'm going to touch upon probate, but to probate a will, all the uh, all we need to send to the circuit is the original will, death certificate, check for about one hundred fifty dollars, and fill out uh, their probate questionnaire. And while the circuit's office is closed to the public, uh, what they're doing now is they're typing up the forms and sending them to my office, and the people sign in uh, in my office, like you know, six and a half feet away, wearing their masks. And even though I've got my both my shots, we're still uh, wearing masks when when we have people in the office. And, uh, but again, New Jersey is a probate easy state, but think of the executor, um, you know, should be someone who can do the job. So our rule of thumb has been, can the executor drive to a bank, open up an estate account? Can the executor walk up half a flight of steps? You know, if someone, you know, my grandfather was a smart guy, but when he was 95 years old, he didn't, you know, he couldn't get around that good, but he was the executor of his cousin's will because, no one, uh, the other executor right, had already passed away. So the, uh, the executor carries out the terms of the will. Um, sometimes we'll have a clause in a will that says like a trust being set up within the will. That's called a testamentary trust. So it doesn't have to be funded. It, you know, it's, it, it's not a 30 page document. So a simple example of a testamentary trust is where someone says, okay, if anyone's under the age of 21 or 25, they don't get their money until they're 25, but the executor can hold the money and spend as much money as needed for health, education, maintenance, support, college, et cetera. When people have minor children, we typically have a, a, a clause, a trust clause in the will that says they get some money when they're 22, some when they're 25, the balance when they're 30, but the trustee can expend as much money as they deem appropriate for that person's like, you know, support college, et cetera. So, you know, kids like, you know, uh, the money's being held, it's paying for, you know, uh, you know, a good private school like University of Scranton or Bucknell or whatever school. And then afterwards, like, you know, they say, listen, I like, you know, I'm thinking of going to grad school. Okay, that makes sense. Let's say they finish school and then they say, listen, 
I like to buy a condo close to where I'm working now or moving out of state. Trustee can say, okay, I'll advance some of your parents' money. On the other hand, let's say the kid drops out of college and says, oh, school is so stressful. I need to find myself and I want to take a trip across Europe with a bunch of my buddies and I need $80,000, a check for $80,000. The trustee will say, hey, go, go work go work your own job when you're not going to take your parents money and let you blow it goofing off. Um, so, um, you know, so, and sometimes like people have, I mentioned, sometimes we set up trust within the will where, um, you know, someone's not getting any money like outright ever, uh, because they have, uh, you know, uh, you know, mental problems and, uh, you know, they're in and out of institutions. And we know, just like another person was an alcoholic, you give an alcoholic $100 cash, they'll buy $100 worth of booze. So the trust was set up where one of the, um, uh, one of his sisters was the trustee and would uh, cut checks to pay for his rent, pay for his car insurance because he was driving and, uh, you know, set up an account, uh, you know, and bought, uh, give him shop right gift cards so he could buy all the food that he needs, you know, but not, American Express gift cards because you can buy booze with that, but you can't buy booze with with the Shoprite gift cards. Now, uh, the and the reason why we also like uh, have age is because hey, eighteen year olds don't do smart with money. That's why if someone doesn't have a will and they have like uh, minor children, well, th that kid gets the money outright when they turn eighteen, and that's kind of scary because no eighteen year olds do smart things with money, and um let's say some kids like you know uh um you know parents both pass every single kid uh in the high school is gonna know hey listen let's see uh you know wendell wendell smith's gonna get you know four hundred thousand dollars the day he turns 18 let's he's gonna be our new best friend we're gonna get him to to like uh, buy our prom tables like take us down the shore spend the money so you gotta kind of, kind of protect the, the the young people or the people that don't have any willpower from themselves and from whoever they're dating at the time. You know, what happens with the, uh, the fellows is their girlfriend goes, oh, you haven't bought me any expensive jewelry in a while. You know, so you know, there's an expression gold digger. Uh, well, you know, so we don't wanna leave money to a 19 year old so that they go to seaside and buy, and buy beer. And it's all part of trying to do the best planning as, as possible. Um, you know, so, uh, the executor carries out the terms of the will. The person who's the trustee holds the money. So the executor and the trustee can be the same person. Let's say uh, the guardian is the one who holds the children. Again, can be the same person. So some people put up doing documents. Well, I can't really decide. I goes, well, let's say, uh, who don't you want to watch your kids? You know, they have difficulty deciding. Who don't you want? Um, and, uh, you know, you know, what, you know, don't, don't put off something that's very important. You wouldn't think about going away for a week and not, you know, setting up someone to watch it, you know, watch your kids for, for that, for that week. So when my clients uh, who have minor kids sometimes say, well, it's so tough. I go, no, it's an easy thing. There's only so many people in your life. You could, you could trust. Let's say if you can leave your room, my office right now, and you were away for the next week, who would you trust to watch your kids? And typically they'd say, oh, my, my mother. Okay, your mom is gonna be the guardian. Well, mom's getting older. Yeah, she's getting older, but again, she's the best person at the time. Now, if anyone's taking notes, you wanna write down this word called self-proving will. Uh, and it's important to have a self-proving will. Under the old law, let's say uh, the person signed and two witnesses signed, but then, uh, one of the two witnesses had to sign an affidavit in front of the county surrogate to say, "Hey, listen, I am the um, on the uh, uh, that I was the witness to the will," and that became very cumbersome. Plus, sometimes you couldn't find witnesses, or some of the witnesses would say, "I want I want you to pay me a lot of money to sign." When my grandmother passed, one of the witnesses says, "Yeah, I used to work in that law office. I was a witness." My fee is $500. My father goes, $500. We're not going to pay you $500. Well, ladies, is good. Get the other person. Well, she's dead. Now, if we didn't pay her the $500, we would have spent, you know, three, four grand filing a complaint or to show cause to admit the will to probate. So again, you want to make, you want to make sure your will is a self-proving will. So under the self-proving statute, person signs, two witnesses sign, then the attorney and notary signs, 
Then there's a, a, a separate uh, page where the person signs again, two witnesses sign again, the attorney and notary signs again. Uh, so at least I tell people, listen, I know that the wills I do are self-proving wills are admitted to probate, but I also see that these cheap things that people find online are not self-proving wills. You know, they don't comply with the uniform probate code. So the surrogate says we can't, you know, you're going to have to find one of the witnesses. So, so beware of you uh, using cheap things online. Uh, also make sure your will has a clause that says no bond required, because I mentioned earlier when there's no will, the uh, person who is administrates the estate has to take out a bond. Well, if the will itself does not say no bond is required, the executor has to spend a couple grand out of the beneficiary's money taking out this bond thing. A, the simple no bond required clause with that language alleviates that. Um, we also ask in our questionnaire, is anyone receiving SSI? Is anyone receiving S SDD? Uh, or, or any kind of disability benefits, because sometimes you know, it's, you know, we don't want to leave money outright to them because then they will lose their governmental entitlement. So uh, in that case, uh, some, some people uh, that have like, you know, you know, super special needs kids will spend a lot of money to set up a special needs trust um, so that the money is preserved um, and, you know, they could, their rent be paid for, but, you know, I, I've worked on, uh, you know, matters where like, uh, you know, uh, one of the kids is at, uh, the, uh, Greystone, the psychiatric ward, they're committed and chances are they're never going to come out. Well, you know, why, you know, why have money going to that person when they wouldn't be able to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the money. Now, uh, there's basically like a different types of, uh, wills, um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when it's second marriage situations, um, we don't want to leave, you know, some of the, you know, sometimes they'll say, okay, everything's going to, people want, okay, here's our plan. Everything is going to my spouse. And after that split 50, 50 amongst our family goes, that's a terrible plan. They go, why? He goes, well, because uh, after you pass, your spouse can go and do a new will. And then everything, then she could do another new will to say everything's going to her new husband. And the people like, you know, kind of look at me funny, like, what do you mean a new husband? He goes, well, the third husband he goes well there's not going to be a third husband i said well you weren't planning on having a second spouse either but we're both here now um so uh in that way if it if a trust is set up for the spouse within the will then that money is shielded from creditors it's shielded from medicaid uh it's and it's also it protects them from if they have a new spouse it's protected if they then get divorced from that new spouse and under the law in new jersey if someone is married uh, and their spouse, or actually, the, on the United States of America, if someone is married and one of the people goes into a nursing home and it has to go on Medicaid, um, first that person's money has to be used. Then after that, the spouse is on the hook for that for that money. Just even if they have a prenuptial agreement, uh, even if they've only been married for a week or so. I'm not anti-marriage, but I say, listen, you know, your downside of getting. Um, you know, married when, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're of, of age, you know, uh, you know, super seniors that if you're, if your new spouse has to go to the nursing home, you got to pay once they run out of money, you know, people, people like, uh, don't, don't think about that. Okay. So logistically nowadays doing a will, um, we've made it easier for people. I mentioned we email out a questionnaire, we get the questionnaire in, um, you know, I, I print it out, I do a spell check, and then I call everyone, uh, you know, within the, within like uh, that day. And I'm calling people. I, I have that uh, hands free uh, on my car, on my on my new car, and it's great because listen, when I'm in the car, I got all the time in the world. And I, I aside from keeping two hands on the wheel and paying attention to the road, I have no other distractions. When I'm in the office. You know, I'm talking to someone, but then, you know, the law clerks are asking me questions and then there's other things to do. You know, so I find I can spend more time talking to people while we are, you know, chatting on the phone. And I, I always say, OK, what questions you have, what questions you have, what questions you have. And again, I've been doing this for 35 plus plus years. I passed the bar in uh, 1985, uh, and then he passed New York Bar in 1986 when JFK Jr. failed for the second time. So this is what, you know, nowadays I'm, I'm doing for a living. So 
People uh, email the attorney the questionnaire. They've typed in everything. Um, call everyone back. He said, okay, looking at what, what's appropriate for the people. This is what the fees are. The people either you know, send us a check or drop it through our law office mail slot on Woodbridge Avenue in Edison. Uh, more and more people are, are paying like uh, just by credit card over the phone or by email. Um, you know, one person said, well, I'm kind of concerned. He goes, listen, I got uh, two things. I guarantee you I'm not going to steal from you. Number two, uh, attorneys are all like, uh, all the clients are protected by what's called the uh, client security fund. So and if attorney went south with someone's money, then the fund reimburses them a hundred cents on the dollar. Then we prepare the documents and uh, we email out the documents to, to everyone. Um, this way they're not, no one can say that every, anything got lost in the mail. But I do recommend everyone say, listen, print everything out because I want you to read the printed version. And we also provide instructions for everyone on how they can sign because when, uh, when, the, when the state and the country closed down, the UPS stores were allowed to be open. All the UPS stores had notaries and uh, people found, hey, it was easier to go to the UPS store with their spouse and one witness on a weekend or nights. You know, it used to be people would say, what's, what's your weekend hours? Uh, and I'd say, I don't have any weekend hours. That's when I'm doing the charity running races or I'm doing, I'm doing the fun stuff with my dog. You know, I don't wanna be in the office on weekends. So it, by people, like people found it was easier for to, to sign in front of a notary on the, on, on the weekends. Now, after someone signs the document, then, uh, um, you know, you keep the original, that's your property. Uh, so again, don't be a putter off or don't put anything off. Uh, sometimes people will say, well, I like to read up on this. I goes, don't be like Mr. Mr. K. He kept on saying, well, I'd like to read up on this. He goes, Mr. K, listen, you don't need to read anything. Let's say I went to law school. I attend seminars. Let's say uh, I, I wrote a book on this. You don't need to read. Just like uh, I don't ask the uh, electrician on how he does his stuff or read about electrical work. I don't, I don't need... No, I don't want to know. I don't need to know. Well, Mr. K, oh, I like to read more up. I, okay, well, never gets around to doing his stuff. And then two years later, he dies. and His family goes, oh, we found some communications between you and dad. Do you have a copy of his will? He goes, no, we never did a will. You know, he, he kept on wanting to read. So you don't need to read anything. You know, your attorney has read, has read for you. What are some of the clauses that typically go in the will? Uh, number one, debts and taxes paid distribution to spouse or sometimes a trust to the spouse, distribution is children or sometimes a, a trust to hold the money for the children. Uh, what happens if there's beneficiaries under 21? Who's going to be the executor? Who's going to be the trustee? Who's going to be the guardian? Make sure there's a clause that says um, no bond required. Um, and uh, there's, there's, other, there's other clauses, but again, um, you know, it's things that we, like, uh, we do to people. Now, only the original will can be admitted to probate. So uh, we email everyone afterwards and remind people, I goes this, let's say, only the original will can be admitted to probate. Think of the county surrogate as a fancy name for the will clerk. Only the will clerk can, can admit the documents to what's called probate. Let's say, um, if there's not an original, surrogate has no power and you have to file a complaint or to show cause to have it, uh, you know, put before a, um, you know, a judge spending these, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. So, um, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's try to make things as easy as possible for the family. Let's see. Um, people sometimes like say, tell me about, tell me about trust. And my mother-in-law used to, you know, call me up every other year. I'd like to come in and get a trust done. And I would say, we watching Susie Orman. And she says, oh yes, I was. I goes, you know, I love Susie Orman. He goes, Susie Orman is very, very right if uh, you live in New York, California, Florida, where the probate process is very, very, very complicated. But New Jersey, the probate process is easy. So I asked people, uh, why do you think you need a three or $4,000 trust when a $400 will will do the job? Probate in New Jersey is easy and inexpensive. Our revocable trust does not protect assets from nursing home or taxes. Um, sometimes the trust salesmen say, well, you know, a, a will is like public record. It goes, yeah, but 
you know, typically you're leaving your assets to your spouse, your kids, your family, you're not leaving it to like, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, terrorists. So why do you care if people know who's getting your stuff? Because assets are not listed in the will. Let's see why are assets not listed in the will? Because, you know, you don't know what, you know, what you're going to own. Um, now there is like a, sometimes there is a benefit to doing a revocable trust. Um, you know, a revo you know, some people like uh, have assets in other states. We put it in a revocable trust. That way, it doesn't have to go through the probate process um, in different in different areas. Also, if it's in a revocable trust, then uh, when someone dies, then the trust becomes permanent. Um, and um, but now. There is a thing called an irrevocable trust. What an irrevocable trust is, um, it's where the, the assets are retitled, no longer owned by you, but they are owned by the trust in the trust name with a separate tax ID number. Almost like think of, you know, they're owned now by like, like a corporation. Uh, the positive there is if it's owned by an irrevocable trust and um, five years go by, 60 months, then those assets are shielded from Medicaid. But remember, you can't be the primary trustee. You can't control it. So uh, you know, you know that's why you know, like uh, when we talk about um, you know irrevocable trusts, like uh, you know, very few people get around to uh, you know to doing to doing these kind these kinds of trusts. Now, once again, uh, once the will is signed, you have to make sure it is in a location where. Uh, executor one or executor two can get to it. That's why it's a poor idea to put your assets in a bank safe deposit box. Why is that? Well, like, well, uh, don't assume the person you gave the key can get to it. But what happened last like March? The banks were closed. You couldn't get there. Also, sometimes you need your living will, your PAV attorney on emergent basis on the weekends at nighttime. Well, the bank is not going to open up for you and open up their vaults so you can get documents out of safe deposit box. And also the other problem sometimes with these bank safe deposit boxes, banks change ownership and, uh, you know, the banks, some of the banks don't keep good records. So uh, for my, for my Metuchen friends, like we're going back, uh, my parents had a bank account at the old Metuchen Commonwealth uh, building at 407 Main Street. Then it became like a first fidelity and first union, and then maybe something else, but eventually Wells Fargo. So my dad, um, you know, puts my name on the safe deposit box, like, uh, you know, early on, gives me the key. And uh, one day he goes, you know what? I, you know, my kids' bonds were in the safe deposit box. And like, uh, uh, I goes like, you know, I'm going to go to the safe deposit box, see what kind of bonds my kids have. And I have the key and I, my ID. And now Wells Fargo goes, uh, oh, uh, we don't have you listed as on the account. I goes, no, 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 don't go there. You know, I know my father, the engineer, came to this bank and, and uh, filled out papers. But when Wells Fargo took it over, they just didn't keep good records of who were uh, on the banks. Now, I was lucky that both my parents were around. You know, they could drive, uh, drive up to the touch and assign papers. But then, then at Wells Fargo, then they were trying to sell uh, to my 70 plus year old mom, a 30 year annuity, because that's what they were trying to get commissions from. So, uh, you know, I told me, don't leave your, your stuff in a safe, a safe deposit box, buy a fireproof uh, box from uh, Costco, um, you know, put it under your bed in the closet upstairs and just let your kids know where everything is. Okay. Um, uh, we've been talking mostly about wills and, uh, and uh, you know, estates. Uh, now, a will does not need to be updated uh, ever. A will that's uh, have to be, I use the word have to be. A will that's done now is valid five years from now, is valid 10 years from now. But you have to look to see, are there any changes you want to make over time? But a will that's done in Jersey is valid in any other state. However, I recommend a power of attorney be re-signed um every five years because a lot of these banks give people a hard time and if you move to another state then you should do a new power of attorney because um the institutions in that other state um you know won't you know may not honor your power of attorney um before i got uh, and before i jump into power of attorney um my office typically charges a 200 consult fee 
uh, for everyone. But for people who are nice enough to listen to uh, my programs, if they contact us within 30 days of the program, then we waive the consult fee. And uh, again, it's a you know, 200, $250 consult fee. And typically what I do is um, I will email, just like with a, I email the short questionnaire, fill, you know, fill it out. Then I talk to people because I need to know information. Uh, attorneys need to know information, just like going to a doctor, you know, they have you fill out a form so the doctor can better, you know, analyze what to do and how to help you best. The doc, you know, you couldn't say to the doctor, oh, I don't want to fill any forms to tell you anything. I just want to chat with the doctor. The doctor goes, no, 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 listen, we want to do it right. Okay, let's talk now about uh, powers of attorney. A will takes care of your assets if you pass away. A power of attorney is while you're alive, but you're giving power to someone who you trust to make sure that your bills can be paid and uh, um, and that you know you're financially kind of like you know they, they can help you out as best as possible. So most people make the person who is the um, the executor the same person who's their agent in the power of attorney. Now there's two types of powers of attorney. One um, is the durable power of attorney that it's effective now and stays effective only upon even if someone becomes disabled. Um, you know. You know, and so the spray, uh, the then there's a, a power of attorney that's effective only upon disability with a written note and documentation by a doctor. That's called a springing power of attorney. Uh, most people make the power of attorney effective right away uh, because they usually trust the person. Uh, I had a, uh, a client who I liked, but he goes to me, Kenny, I don't understand this legal stuff where you're saying springing and durable. He goes, I'm... I'm a carpenter. Explain to me, please, in carpenter terms. He goes, okay, fine. Let's see. Um, if it's effective right away, your power of attorney, your son can steal all your money right away. If it's effective only upon disability, your son needs to get a note from a doctor before he steals your money. Knowing that, do you trust your son? He goes, oh, I trust my son in my life. I goes, okay, good. Then make it effective right away. Um, you know, so uh, now, this is another reason why it's important to have a, uh, a competent attorney prepare documents. Uh, there, uh, so, uh, before the change in the law, a lot of banks were giving people a hard time and they were saying, well, uh, we, we, want, we, we want it to be done in our form, uh, go have it done. They were giving people a hard time. So there was a statute that was um, adopted saying, listen, if it, if it makes reference to the New Jersey statute, then the banks who, and the institutions, financial, and so who do work in New Jersey have to follow it. But the power of attorney has to make reference to section two of PL 1991, C95, C46 colon uh, 2B 11. And I'm pretty sure some of these cheap things don't say, don't say that. Uh, now, um, now, here's something that we've been recommending uh, in the past year, especially uh, with the, uh, you know, when with the COVID and stuff that got, after you sign your power of attorney, scan it and then email it to yourself, email it to your, your uh, agent one, agent two, agent two, if you want your family to know, you can email it to all the family members and then email it to your, fi uh, your financial um, planner your, your bank, your life insurance person. This way it's on their record so that if someone needs to have, you know, access to and make sure, be able to, that it's already in their records. Now, you get the, don't put it off things. Get the documents done now. Uh, we get calls periodically. Oh, uh, I need to get a power of attorney over mom, dad, uncle Joe. Well, you can't get the power of attorney over anyone. They, they have to affirmatively say, let's say, I want, you know, uh, this is what I want. And they got to sign it. If someone can't tell me I want, you know, I want my, it's my daughter won this, then I can't do the document. I mean, that's, that's the law. We've also updated our power of attorney um, and also our living will to have language under the New Jersey Care Act. So the New Jersey Care Act um, basically says that um, it helps like family caregivers once they, you know, if, if someone goes into a, uh, a hospital transition home, it identifies a designated family caregiver when the patient is admitted and uh, if the patient's going to be like uh, moved or, or discharged. The reason why this is important is and just like I'm going to go into uh, living wills, you know, sometimes you get 
the person that was helping out mom or dad the most. However, all of a sudden, mom, you know, uh, has to go into hospital. And then the kid that wasn't there around to help all of a sudden drives to New Jersey or flies to New Jersey, barges into the hospital room and says, okay, I'm in charge now. And I'm going to be, I'm telling you what to do. Well, the answer, is, you know, you want, hey, you've already picked someone to be the captain of the ship and it's not you. So again, have your, have your have attorney done, you know, scan it, send copies to the family, to the fa different family members. The last document I'm going to talk about before we talk about um, some financial planning suggestions is the living will advance directive. So think of the, uh, you know, everyone remembers the Karen Ann Quinlan case and then Terry Shavo when that was on TV and the issue on, you know, what to do if someone's in a coma, irreversible condition, you know, uh, um, you know, brain dead, et cetera. So the living will document is not for you. It's for your family. So that God forbid, all of a sudden, you know, there's no hope for you. You can't, op you can't talk. You can't open up your eyes. You've, you've already made, you know, the decision so that the family isn't burdened uh, with that, the horrible decision on what to do. I remember years ago, you know, because the person did not have a living will and the doctor's asking me, okay, uh, you know, can, should we move, remove life support? And I'm like, geez, I, I feel bad. You know what the right decision is for someone who is 92 years old that's never getting uh, regained consciousness, but you hate to be the one to say to the doctor, okay, let's, let's, like, let's end their life today. You feel, you feel bad. I couldn't even do that for I like, got uh, my first dog. So the whole idea is you do the document so that if all, you know, God forbid someone's in a, you know, uh, you know, there's no hope for them. The doctor says what to do. The answer is, okay, yeah, you know, dad, mom, you know, whomever, they did this living will, uh, you know, with Ken Burkhamen's office, you know, and let's, let's follow what they want. In the living will, um, there, uh, we, we took language from the New Jersey uh, Medical Society where, so doctors are familiar with it. The first section is like uh, fluids and nutrition, yes or no. Uh, most people, 85% of people say, listen, I don't want feeding tubes. There's no hope for me. Uh, you know, that's it. This next section deals with artificial, uh, you know, mean machines, medical treatment. 99% of people say, listen, there's no hope for me. You know, I don't want to be on, you know, respirators and having my family suffer, having to wait to the last day. We also updated both our powers of attorney and living wills to include, um, medical records access under HIPAA, because if it doesn't say that, then they don't have access. Um, and you know, the, uh, and you gotta think, okay, uh, you wanna do this so that your family is not burdened, burdened, burdened. The last section of the uh, living will talks about organ donation, yes or no. I always recommend organ donation. Uh, that, you, know, uh, you know, if you could be saving someone's life. I went to an interesting uh, seminar put on by the NJ Sharing Network. And um, I said, by the way, he goes, what is the maximum age to be an organ donor? They said, there is no maximum age. I goes, well, what's good on an 85-year-old guy? They said, skin and cornea. I goes, wow, I never thought about that. You know, if I was burned in a fire, I'd rather have old guy's skin than the stuff that got burned off my body. Okay, real fast. Again, probate in New Jersey is easy. We've already went through uh, the surrogate. Uh, you know, we get them the uh, original will, death certificate, check for $150. We fill out the papers. Um, we get, then the person gets the letters testamentary. They open up uh, an estate account, get a tax ID number. Um, assets get liquidated. They get put into the estate account. We sell the house. And then like uh, at the end, the executor prepares an informal accounting, nothing fancy. Uh, it could be an Excel spreadsheet. It could be hand. It could be copies of the of the uh, check uh, uh, register and the account statements. And then the attorney prepares a release and funding bond. We tell everyone to sign. As long as everyone signs, uh, we file with the circuit, and then we don't have to go through expensive court court accountings. So, uh, New Jer believe it or not, New Jersey is the easy the easy state to be. I'd say my name is Ken Verkam and my office is at 2053 Woodbridge Avenue in Addison, New Jersey. My office phone number after 10 a.m. is 732-572-0500. Uh, so now that uh, I've, I've been doing my little bit of talking, I'm going to ask that uh, um, our library director. Um, oh, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, 
McKinnon. Yeah. There are a couple questions were brought okay, up. So, by the so let let the financial planner talk, and then I'm going to go through with the uh, with the questions after the financial okay. plan. So okay. I can read the questions. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Dan Fabrizio, we can hear you. Go. Talk loud. Talk louder. I'm an agent at New York Life Insurance, as well as a financial advisor with New York Life Security. I worked in Wall Street for 22 years and for investments with my clients. Now I work in the industry of individual investments. I am licensed in the state of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And I just want to point out seven more common mistakes as people near or get into retirement. Mistake number one, not planning your retirement with your life expectancy in mind. Stop using your parents and your grandparents as estimates for your life expectancy. The reality is life expectancies are increasing more than they were 30 years ago. The important part, I feel, is to rely on the data, not a hunch, but be careful not to be fooled by actuary estimates. There's nothing deterministic about life expectancies estimates. Number two, not being smart about claiming Social Security. Some people are still taking Social Security before the full retirement age. This means that if you apply for Social Security before the full retirement age, you will receive a smaller monthly Social Security check for the rest of your life. If you have the financial resources and believe that you will live longer than average, generally speaking, Waiting to take Social Security at a later age means you receive a larger check for the rest of your life, and that depends on your personal situation. So to, to learn more about that, visit the Social Security website. Number three, taking a lump sum from a pension could lead to expensive mistakes. But thanks to annuities, it can help retirees meet their retirement goals with a guaranteed lifetime income stream when a lump sum payment is your only option. If you are able to receive a lifetime income stream from your current pension, it may be the preferable option depending on one's particular circumstances. Number four, too much risk in your investments as one nears retirement. By taking more risk with your portfolio when you may not need can dampen or reduce your retirement income. So as you get closer to retirement, you don't want your, reti your retirement benefits to be in all equities and nothing in bonds. Uh, you want to balance it out and be very conservative. Number five, buy life insurance as an employee benefit. While it's generally less expensive and easier to take long-term life insurance coverage from your employer while you're still working, this coverage typically goes away once you leave the company or retire. And if you're age 50 and older when you retire, it can get expensive to begin buying life insurance at that age. One option, the easy and too late option, is to buy permanent life insurance policy when one is younger, in addition to your employer coverage. But if you're 50 and older, there are still some whole life insurance products, depending on your coverage goals, one is seeking, can help with your retirement plans. Number six, focusing on assets over income. One mistake I've seen is failing to switch your mindset from retirement savings to retirement spending when nearing or at retirement. The purpose of saving for retirement is so that you have enough money to spend while you're in retirement. Say you have 500,000 in your IRA, but in terms of living standards, what is exactly that? And based on your spending needs and other income sources, how should the asset be allocated once you retire? Can you safely withdraw 3%, 4%, 5% a year and have your entire pension last your lifetime? Here's the reality. It's hard to know what kind, kind of standards one living can have if all your assets in one type of product in the account. Consider reviewing your financial situation with a financial professional that can help you with retirement goals and plans. And finally, number seven, bank CDs. Older, older adults when they retire tend to store a lot of young people in the because of the bank. The downside of the bank CD is that it's lots of money into a multi-year CD, at the end of the year, you the bank is going to send you a 1099 form with the interest income you earn, and you're going to have to pay 
taxes on any of your income if you don't get to spend any of your income. The better option that's available is to spend a lot of money on social media is open in most of your annuity instead. Here's why. One, you'll probably get a slightly higher interest rate. Two, and the most important part, is that the interest you earn annually on the annuity is tax deferred. This means at the end of every year, you will not receive a 1099 and pay taxes on the interest you've earned. So you cannot before. Okay, you only pay you only pay taxes on the money at the end of the annuity expires, or if you roll it into another annuity, it remains tax deferred. Okay, those are the items I just wanted to discuss briefly. And if there's any questions, please add them in your big tens question. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'd say uh, so. Um, what uh, what I'm uh, I if um, I'm going to um, provide some uh, materials to the library, and um, because I tried to attach like uh, in the chat before the short will questionnaire, uh, so I'm going to uh, suggest to the library. I'm going to email you what we have as our, our probate estates newsletter that has our, um, you know, the, the typical will questionnaire. Uh, people can see how simple it is. I'd say we've never had anyone after doing a will say, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Everyone's like, that was pretty easy. I'm glad I finally got it done. But getting your documents done is kind of like, you know, people put off, no one looks forward to spring cleaning, cleaning the garage. No one looks forward to like uh, cleaning the basement or, or doing this, doing that. But once you, you know, cleaning the yard, you know, oh, I, you know, I'm really looking forward to cleaning the, uh, cleaning the, the, uh, the yard. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask the library uh, to send that out. Typically, we go for about 45 minutes. Uh, I see that we're past the 45 minute time. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if our library director is still on. Library director, yes. are you still on? Yes, uh, Mr. Mankama. I just want to let you know there were two questions. Were brought I don't up. see the questions. Well, they, they, they send it directly to me. Oh, um, that's to everyone. So one right, question. Right. One question is they want to know what is the New Jersey statutes for the power of attorney. If you can share that information. I'd say, yeah, well, there's, uh, the New, the, there's the New Jersey statute that deals with power of attorney is, um, section is uh, 46 colon 2B-11. 46 colon 2B-11. Good. What's okay. the next question? Next question is that somebody wants to get have some advice of uh, childless couples on selection of executors and the power of attorney. Thank okay, you. so so people got to think. You know, uh, we've done wills for people, and one of the reasons why they didn't do stuff because well, they said they don't have children. You know, um, you know, they haven't decided. It goes well. Do you understand that if something happens to both of you, not having kids, not having close blood relatives? the state of New Jersey would get your money. Do you want Trenton to get everything you've worked for, you know, knowing that you worked overtime on weekends and you, you skip vacations? You want, you want Trenton to get your money? Everyone's like, no, no, absolutely not. They're my last person. I goes, you know, well, you, can think of you can think of charities in the, in the community. You can think of people that were nice to you. We did a will for a little old lady that was 90 years old. Uh, her sister had passed, uh, her, you know, her husband had passed, she didn't have any kids, and uh, she had some cousins that she hadn't heard from for years, but she left assets, she left her estate to some of her neighbors and uh, in her, hair, in her hairdresser. She said, these people were nice to me, uh, especially the neighbors, you know, that, that she knew from church. They were nice people. They knew their, their, their kids and their grandkids could use the money. Uh, so... Uh, if you don't have, you know, now who should be the executor? Well, um, typically a bank will not be an executor unless you have what I call a lot of zeros, a lot of money. So uh, if, you know, some people said, I, I would like the charity to be the executor. Many charities won't be the executor. So if it's not a family member, in that instance, it's probably a good idea to ask them first saying, listen, will you be the executor? And in one of my estates, a fellow is the executor who goes, how long is this going to last? And I goes, we're going to be done with this in, in, in seven months. And I'm going to do most of the heavy work. Be, you know, I'm just going to tell you where to sign and where to do this. He goes, okay, that's easy. Um, you know, so did that answer the question on, you know, being the executor? 
Yes. Was that the question? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but at least to me, yes, you answer okay. the question. Okay, that is, that is, that is, um, you know, so, you know, the whole thing is no one would decide to go on, on, on vacation on a Friday and not do any planning ahead of time. The time to do the planning is, is now, not when you're in the hospital. The time to do the planning is not when you've already passed away. You know, so you do the things now and it's one more thing you've taken care of for your family, for, your, for, your, for yourself. Hey, listen, when, when, when we had young kids, we all had life insurance. No one that got, we weren't required to have life insurance, but we knew it was the right thing to do. And uh, again, most of us like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, we never used up the life insurance because we were lucky. Well, we were, we were winners, but it was smart having life insurance and doing the uh, uh, estate plan and the same thing. It's smart having this, uh, this there and, uh, and it's in place. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I will, Ms. Chung, I'll email you like, uh, and then uh, if possible, you can email out, uh, you know, to the attendees, like what I have as materials. Okay. 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 Very just good. to let you, everyone, if you want to have a copy of the questionnaire, just email Matajan Public Library at lmxcc.org. Then I will send the questionnaire. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Van Campen. Okay. Be, so be well. Bye-bye. Take Bye. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.